Gaza is suffering for hiding the spies on the roof. Let's repeat that. Gaza, the Arabians, are suffering because they are hiding Bilal, who is supposed to be their ruler. Inside Bilal, Rabbah, you can spell Arab. He is the ruler of you. And this is the reason why it's destruction and it's chaos and it's a woe. Because you and your people have failed to follow the prophecy. That's in the Hebrew scriptures. How come your scholars don't know why y'all suffering? It's because you're ignoring your Mahdi. Now there's a story about a man by the name of Samson. He had power. Power. And his only purpose was to destroy the Philistines. And this is exactly what's happening. There's power available right now to help the Palestinians. But they are ignoring it. And God is allowing that place to be torn to pieces. This is why Samson was destroying the Philistines. Inside Philistines is really going into Palestine. He's destroying them because they have been ignoring their Mahdi. Now let's get started. According to the Bible, there are destruction prophecies for Gaza. And I want to go over a few of them. This is going to be in the book of Amos. This is going to be the book of Amos 1 and 6. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof. Now, I believe the wall is going into the story of Rahab when she hid the two spies. Right now, there are two men hiding on top of the Kaaba. Now, Bilal was the man who did the Adan, who did the prayer, who woke the people up. This man prayed first because he was a type and shadow of the Mahdi. He was a type and shadow of him. And right now, the Mahdi is being ignored by his own people. And therefore, this is the reason why all of this chaos and destruction is going on. It's because they have failed to pay the bill. And the bill is Bilal. And according to your own Bible, God will do nothing except he reveal it to his servants the prophets. Now you can ask everybody what's going on in Gaza. What's going on with the Arabian people? How come Allah's help is not near? It's because they have been ignoring the law and they failed to pay the bill. The prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He was a real prophet. And a lot of the things he did was in metaphors. So when he elected Bilal to be the first person to do the prayers on top of the Kaaba, this was a picture of the Mahdi. Right now, there are two men hiding on top of the Kaaba. And that is Bilal, who is a type and shadow of the Mahdi. This is the real truth about the whole situation. You can ask anybody why they suffering and they're going to be clueless because Allah revealed to me it is because they are ignoring their Mahdi. That's the real truth. Take it to the bank. It's going to come back. It's not going to bounce. Now, let's go to Joel. Joel has something to say about this. This is going to be Joel. Chapter 3, verse 4. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly 
and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. What did they do? Watch this. Verse 5. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. That Kaaba does not belong to you no more. It's under new management. It's under the Magdi. Verse 6, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians that you might remove them far from their border. Now, this is the thing. The black nation is suffering right now all because the Arabians. They have failed to split the kingdom with the Madi. See, I'm going to put my people on. OK, but I can't do that as long as they are holding on to my silver and my gold. You see, according to the book of Joshua, Akon, OK, Mr. I'm locked up. They won't let me out. He was found with the silver and the wedge of gold underneath his tent. And I am the wedge. I am the Jew that is in captivity right now. To the Arabians. It's like the sub-Saharan slave trade. All over. Now you didn't hear me talking like this. Weeks ago. But when Allah comes in the house. And gives you the insight. You are spot on. You cannot pronounce good news on anybody. Whom Allah has not pronounced good news upon. And this is the real truth. It hurts. I tear up. The children of Ishmael are suffering because they are holding the black nation back. It's supposed to be the black and brown right now. Right now, according to their own Hadith, and I'm going to get that, there's supposed to be a new ruler over the Arabs. Now this is going to be the Al-Bakari, book 31, number 4269, narrated by Abdullah Abin Musa, peace be upon him. The prophet, peace be upon him, said, if only one day of this world remained, Allah would lengthen that day according to the version of Zahada, till he raise up in it a man who belongs to me or to my family, whose father name is the same as my father's. Let's pause real quick. This is a metaphor. But when I went to the mosque for the first time in my hometown, the name they gave me is the name of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him, father's name. Okay, they call me Abdullah right now in the mosque. But this is all going into a metaphor because in Deuteronomy 18 and 18, where it says, I will raise them up a prophet from among your brethren. He wasn't talking about the Israelites. He was talking about another nation. And right now he is talking about the prophethood. He is talking about the household of the prophets. Okay, going on. Who will fill the earth with equity and justice as it has been filled with oppression and tyranny. According to the version of the fitter, Sufan's version say, the world will not pass away before the Arabs are ruled by a man of my family whose name will be the same as mine. Now, this right here is what they told me when I came in. They called me Abdullah. Okay, how you pronounce it? Abdullah. I didn't ask for it. This is what they said. And it said his name will be as his father's name. Now, my father's name is Monty Brooks. That is going into the mountain. And my name is the mountain. The Monty. La Monty. El Monty. I'm chosen. I am the man that is spoken of in this Hadith. And they are ignoring me. And Allah is turning up the heat. He's turning up the melting pot right now. The Mahdi, okay, is the guided figure in Islamic eschatology who is believed to appear at the end of times to rid the world of evil and injustice. He is said to be a descendant of Muhammad who will appear shortly before Jesus. Now, y'all holding me back. Okay, I am from the family of Abraham. 
Okay, that is all going into a metaphor. And I am El Monte. I am the El Madi. That's who I am. And they holding me back. They still holding me back. And I know it's the pride of their race. Okay, it is the glory of Kadar. And that glory, according to Isaiah 21, is going to fall. All of the glory of Kadar is going to fall. You know why? Because a black man is going to be over it. And things are going to continue to get more bloody, more explosive, as long as they keep ignoring their Madi. And right in Song of Solomon, chapter 1, it tells you, Oh, I am black, but calmly. Oh, you daughters of Jerusalem. As the tents of Kadar. Kadar means Arabs. And the Arabs are supposed to be being ruled by one black man. Going on. Look not upon me because I'm black. Because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. Why? Because God Almighty allowed me to be the keeper of the vineyard. The vineyard is the law. I am the new ruler over the Arabs. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to me the other day. And that's what set me on fire. He revealed to me that I was most closest to Allah. Could you imagine the shock I was in? And he told me that he was going to use me, little old me, to clean up this whole earth. I was ecstatic because I automatically thought about the prophet Muhammad and I thought about Jesus. I would have never thought that Allah thought of me this way. But when I look over my life, when I look how my health has been, when I look at all the times I've been spared, it makes sense. Let me tell you something. I feel like Jeremiah. Gaza is going to suffer more destruction. More people are going to die as long as you keep refusing your Madi. It's going to continue to get turned up. There's going to be more suffering, more dying until they receive their Madi. Okay, so I encourage you to spread this truth. You need to share this to help your own people. This is the reason why y'all suffering. Y'all are ignoring the bill that is laying on the table. That bill has to be paid. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He split the moon in two because he split the kingdom in between him and the Mahdi. And right now, they are refusing to give the kingdom to belong. And this right here, man, was a shocker to me. You cannot pronounce good news on someone whom God has no good news for. And a lot of people are falling victim to the Palestinian and, and this and that. But they fail to see that there is a bill that's being ignored. That's on the table. That kingdom is supposed to be split and there is a black man who is supposed to be the ruler of the Arabs. And I have that insight from Allah himself. And I'm not shying away from the truth. The problem with the Arabians, the problem with them is that they ignored Bilal. And so therefore, they ignored the Bible. In the Hebrew scriptures, which the Quran confirms, pronounces judgments on Gaza. Let's get another one. This is going to be Zephaniah 2 and 4. For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. Zechariah 9 and 5. Ashkelon shall see it and fear. Gaza also shall see it and be very sorrowful. And Ekron, for her expectation, shall be ashamed, and the king shall perish from Gaza, and Ashkelon shall not be habited. You see, the prophet Muhammad, he was the prophet of the Arabian religion. And right now, that scepter is being passed. 
from him to the Mahdi. And right now they are experiencing turmoil simply because the Mahdi has been here since 1982. And their imams and all of their prayer warriors have failed to figure this out. They think it's one of them. They are in the pride of their race. And by them ignoring Bilal, they have ignored the Bible. And that's why they don't know the Bible. Right now, they're getting their ass kicked by God, Logic, and Sam, and Christian Prince. All these little Christian debaters. Because they don't know the Bible. They haven't been taught the Hebrew Scriptures. They think it's all false. Now, we know the New Testament contains the leaven of the Pharisees. And that is the teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. But the Quran confirms the Hebrew scriptures. And according to the Hebrew scriptures, if you read Joshua, if you read that story, it is a picture of two spies that is hiding on Rahab's roof. Those two spies have failed to be recognized. And she's hiding these spies. She's hiding the Mahdi. She's hiding Bilal in a dual meaning. She's hiding them. And she's refusing to tell anybody about these two men she's hiding. She's hiding a black man who is supposed to be the ruler of her army. He's here and she's playing games. She's making all these movies about the imams and the coming of the Mahdi or the Mahdi. That's how y'all pronounce it. And she's clueless. The nation of Ishmael is in utter destruction simply because they are ignoring their messenger. They had one husband. Okay, that husband passed away. Peace be upon him, the prophet Muhammad. But now they have a new husband and he is here and he is being ignored. She is hiding the two spies. She's hiding Bilal and she's hiding the Mahdi. And that is a picture of the one and only Mahdi, El Lamanti. I am here. I'm here and I'm here with the truth. I am the Mahdi. My son was born in May. My dad was born in May. And I was born May the 13th. The 13th letter of the alphabet in English is M. I am the Mahdi and I'm here. I encourage you to share this short clip with somebody that's over there. Let them see the reason why. All this stuff is happening. All these kids is wondering, does God hate us? Why has Allah forsaken us? And all these people is just making up these false prophecies talking about Allah's help is near. Allah's help cannot be near because Rahab or Arab is hiding the two spies. She is hiding Bilal, which is a picture of the Mahdi. Simply put, she's hiding her Mahdi. She thinks her Mahdi is Arabian, but her Mahdi is black. And that's the real truth. Share this. Okay. We need someone in the nation of Islam who knows the Bible. The imams don't know it. They don't have a clue. They are losing. They are losing the debates. They don't know the Bible. Why? Because their Mahdi is here and he knows it and he can help them. He can help them. I've been told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I know the Bible more than anybody. I've been told that. Straight up. Just told me flat out. One day I was with my wife. And we was on the couch. And you know it was a little adult. And I was told. To go to the book of Daniel. Chapter 2. And it talks about the clay. And the iron. That they don't mix together. And then a stone. Came out. And took down Nebuchadnezzar's image. And that stone was Lamonti. Lamonti clay. Okay. He told me that. He showed me that. Okay. And I've been singing about an Arabian army for years. Even before I came into Islam. And right here, what do you know? The truth is out that I am El Mahdi. 
I am the Lamanti. I am El Monte. However you put it, I am the chosen just ruler. I'm here to fill this earth with justice and equity. When you read the scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, it talks about a king. It talks about a man who will bring forth justice to truth. That is all going into the Mahdi. The prophet Isa talked about him. He talked about the stone which the builders rejected. That same stone has become the chief cornerstone. Why? Because that chief cornerstone became the ruler of the Arabs. Now, you got to get out of your feeling. A lot of your imams are blind. They're like little moms. They're so blind. They don't have a clue of Bible prophecy. Okay, they don't even want to pay attention to the scriptures that the Quran confirms. And this is their downfall. Save a Palestinian baby today. Save someone from the destruction because the destruction is only going to get worse and worse and worse as long as they keep refusing to accept the stone. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.